Uh, but verses 6 through 8, where it talks about how he came down here through 42 generations. Yeah, he did not want to die. But that divine in him, the will of the Father in him, said, Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. We need to be more concerned about that spiritual death than we are the natural death. Let us not get it twisted. God is not beating us up for having a, a, a grief over someone dying in the natural. But if they are in the Lord, you can rejoice because they've gone on to a better place. They've entered into His rest. But if they were not, and if you're not, you need to be more concerned about that spiritual death. Because that is something that you cannot be brought back from. Mm. He brought us back from death of sin, but eternal damnation is when it's over. That's game over. Game right there, game over. Hey Amen. Let me see. Um, you got something that you want to, Pastor, or Sherry? You want to add in on there? Yes. And also remember, people of God, um, the scriptures, and we just thank God for the teaching. It may seem like we're taking a little longer tonight, but we have to obey God and go in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And just remember, um, when you're looking at Isaiah 57, the Word of God says, With no one considering that the uncompromisingly upright and godly person is taken away from the calamity and the evil of this world. We're not considering this because we're caught up in one another. Loving one another, thankful one another, you know, uh, uh, and then when things begin to happen, we have to be, we have to realize we are not down here taking an account of the evil of that ahead of an individual, of a family member, a loved one, or someone that we're sharing a, a, a remorse and grief or pain of loss with. We ain't considering anything because we got them with us. We're not thinking ahead, but God thinks ahead. Aren't you glad about it? Not only for somebody else, but for even for our own life. God thinks ahead. And he sees trouble. Whereas if we would go any further uh, uh, um, beyond the, the boundary of, of being here, we, would, we could lose salvation. Even the days, remember now, in Matthew 24 chapter is going to be shortened you know, because of the evil to come. Because the days are so evil, he going to shorten the days that even his very own elect, and that's just not only the Jews, that's all of us, can be saved. So we have to do line upon line and precept upon precept. A little here and a little there. Wisdom is the principal thing, people of God. And it's not easy for us to do this, but we have to. Amen. Praise God. Sound this alarm of the word of God. Amen. Be encouraged in that and know we're not considering anything. We're, we're people here and sometimes we can be very selfish in, in our emotions concerning this, that, and the other. But that's just our human nature. But we have to understand the works of God and the purpose of God by the Spirit. And only we can do that by faith and trust and reliance on God. So remember that. Amen. And, and realize that... Um, the Word of God lets us know, praise God, in um, 1 John, the third chapter. And he quoted that scripture, and I wanted to give you the, um, also the verses, the chapter um, there where my husband came out of the, the, the rich man. You can start at Luke 16, 19 verse, if you would like to go back and read that. Luke 16, chapter the ninth, starting at the 19 verse. But 1 John 3 also lets us know um, that, beloved, we are... We are even here and now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be, what? Hereafter. So for many that think there's not a hereafter, there's a hereafter. For many think that there's not a heaven or a hell. When we, the scriptures have been read. Oh, yes, there is. Praise God. Hallelujah. We know some religions say that there's not. But nevertheless, the word of God bears it out. But it says we shall... What we shall be hereafter. But we know that when he comes and is manifested. We shall as God's children resemble and be like him. For we shall see him just as he really is. And everyone who has this hope resting on him. Cleanses, purifies himself. Just as he is pure, chaste, undefiled, guiltless. 
Amen. So while we're while we're going through life's trials and tests and tribulations and griefs and pains of loss and things like that, remember those of us that are left here, we must can those of us that have this hope within us. Praise God. How it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we should, when he comes, we're gonna be like him. And whoever believes in that, trusting in that. Praise God cleanses himself. We must continue to allow the word of God to cleanse and purify our hearts and minds. Praise God that we can be chased undefiled and guiltless. Amen. And also remember, praise God, back to John 11, the chap uh, 11 chapter of the Lazarus story. Amen. And Jesus said to her in the 23rd verse, Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. Martha replied, I know that he's going to rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am myself the resurrection. Had it not been for the old brother cross, had it not been for a hill called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the death, burial, and the resurrection, Lord have mercy, Jesus, that many are refuting, praise God, hallelujah. And I know some religions... And are not don't even believe in the resurrection. Lord have mercy on their soul. If there's no resurrection, then our preaching is in vain. Our living in is in vain, and dying is in vain. Amen. But there is a resurrection. He, she, he said, "I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in and adheres to trust and relies on me, although he may die, yet shall he live." And whoever continues to live and believes in and has faith and cleaves to and relies on me shall never actually die at all. Do you believe this? Praise God. God is asking us the same question. Do you believe? What is the works that we shall do, Father, that you may be glorified? Believe. Just believe. Only believe. All things is possible if we believe. Our loved ones, those that have gone on in the Lord, the righteous, and even more than uncompromisingly righteous. We're going to see him again. They shall rise again. He's going he's, he's gonna to rise. She's going to rise again. Into a greater place. So we can be encouraged in this. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not over. We're going to rise again. They shall rise again. Amen. So be encouraged in that. Be encouraged in the Lord. Praise God. God wrote this book. He wrote the plan for the man. Hallelujah. God's plan for the man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And his plans is right and his plans is holy. So we and he's there to comfort us and give us that consolation that we need. And we have one another to comfort one another when we're going through these things. But it is appointed once for man to die. And after that, that after that, the judgment. Amen. 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 And I think we'll conclude about right there because we've just about exhausted everything that we can try to do. And that I believe that the Holy Ghost would have us to do. And one thing I'm going to say, my wife made mention of it. It seemed like, you know, no, we might be going long. To be honest with you, no, we have not. Amen. It's, uh, and when you look at the time there, that's, that's not long. And I'm looking at the recording and I know it's not long. Uh, uh, but it just seems that way because of any time that you take time with the word of God and there's a subject that God really wants to uh, uh, bring home to his people. It seems like you're doing that for a long time. I know sometimes, and I've done this, but particularly when you've been in certain kind of ministries where you have to get the word out in a certain amount of time and you're restricted. So you start talking real fast so that you can get everything in at that all at that time. I'm telling you, God is a redeemer of time. Amen. Because uh, it, it, it does not take a long time. We, we got in this house about 10 after 8. I did not come in here start with this recording until about 9, 9 and 9 p.m. It's 85 minutes since we started this recording. That's an hour and 25 minutes. God is awesome. And he wants us to understand that he has a message. There was absolutely a word from the Lord Amen. here dealing with death. And we could probably go into this more, more in depth. I would have loved to have had people called in so that we could interject with them, get their thoughts. But I tell you what, because this podcast is going out, if anybody that listens to this would like to uh, uh, message back questions and whatever, we'll absolutely respond in according to the word of God. 
But this is something that needs to happen within the churches to have these conversations in Bible study. Amen. Interactive Bible study, guys. I'm telling you, you really can't beat it. Because it assures that the word is going forth and it assures that those are receiving are not just hearing it, they're getting it. Amen. By understanding what's being presented to them. Because there are so many people sitting up in Bible study that don't have a clue what they're hearing. Because some of us that are teaching, we're too caught up in how we present things. We want to seem scholarly. We want to seem learned. So we present things in such a manner that it takes somebody with some certain type of intellect to understand where we're coming from. That ain't how it should be done. The Word of God is very simple and plain. And if you speak in simple, plain, talk to people and, and, and not deviating from the content and the intent of the Scriptures, guess what? They will learn. I have seen evidence of it. i seen a child who was eight years though when I was in new members class at Gravel Hill Missionary Baptist Church starting in January of 1996 because I got saved January 21st so it would have been that following week January 28th we were in new members class I believe for about six weeks uh, 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 we had to go through that process before we took the right hand of fellowship in that class it was about four or five of us me another guy around my age an elder woman and an eight-year-old child. And the instructor was 22 years old. And the thing is, that child understood what was being taught to her better than any of us old adults. Why? Because the instructor made it plain. He, he just spoke what thus saith the Lord in a way that God would have us to do it. And when you teach it right, they will learn it. But you got to want a desire to teach them right as opposed to trying to glorify yourself because I'm teaching. You know, I'm a teacher. Well, you, you ain't nothing outside of God. Amen. So that's what we pray. And, and, and we know that that is the case because we've been in environments where we've heard people respond back and say that they understood what we were saying. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. So we thank God for the interactive Bible study from Sound the Alarm Ministries. Now I'm going to turn it over to my wife so that she can conclude with prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You told us, Father, in your word, uh, trusting you with all of our heart, lean not to our own understanding, to acknowledge you in all of our ways, and you would direct our path. Father, you also let us know in your word that the, the word of God, the scriptures, they come to bring um, hope and comfort and, and, and patience unto us, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And, oh, God, that's why we must study to show ourselves approved and do line upon line, precept upon precept, oh, God, that it all, that you, by your Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, will bring it all together for us to be able to receive and take it in to our spirit, heart, and be, and be still and know that you're God and, and, and let it resonate. Deep in our soul and our spirit, God, where the trouble is, oh God, the soul. God, we need you, God, and we just thank you for sending your word and taking the time out to be able to sit at your feet tonight and be blessed. Oh God, take this word and just continue to minister it to us and your people, Father. Oh God, that it may be, may give more strength in times of, 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 of the pains and loss of death, Heavenly Father, when we lose people to death, Heavenly Father. But we don't lose them, God. Hallelujah, Father God. They just, oh God, hallelujah, pass from death to life. Lord, have mercy, Father. So no one is lost, God, not in you, Heavenly Father. So we thank you for correcting it by your Holy Spirit. In the name of God, for those that have died in you, we know where they are. They're not lost. Oh God, they lost to this world, but not lost to you, Father. In the name of you, not lost to us. So Father, we thank you and we praise you and we just ask you to continue to soothe and, and, and and grant your, your, your comfort and consolation upon many hearts and minds tonight who are grieving, have been grieving. Oh, God, hallelujah. And there is a time, oh, God, when it, it, it won't be so bad and feel so hard and, and, and long, oh, God. But, God, we know that you're the governor of everything in our lives, oh, God. And you know how to take us through, oh, God, and bring us out. And give us a mind to want to come out, Father. In Jesus' name, oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. We thank you, God, for living in this life, to die, to live again. 
in the name of Jesus. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We pray that you will continue.